The MacBook Air needs no introduction and it's long been the go-to laptop for students, professional and Starbucks enthusiasts alike. And in 2018, it got even better when Apple introduced a brand new overhaul design. However, with that design also came a new keyboard, which unfortunately for Apple has been criticized quite a bit. The new 2020 MacBook Air finally fixes this issue and also brings with it a few new upgrades. So is Apple's latest thin and light laptop the ultimate work laptop? Hi, I'm Ryden with Gadgets360 and this is my review of the Apple MacBook Air 2020. Now before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon so you're the first to know whenever we have a new video. The new MacBook Air continues with the same design of the 2018 refresh but is just slightly thicker and heavier. If you're used to the older non-retina MacBook Air like I am, then there's a lot that's new here. The overall size of the laptop is smaller, making it a lot more portable and it's a bit lighter too. The entire body is built using 6000 series aluminium which makes it very sturdy. The Apple logo on the lid isn't backlit anymore but instead features a mirror finish. The 13.3-inch IPS Retina display looks great and is a big step up from the non-Retina model with a much higher resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels. You also get Apple's True Tone technology which automatically adapts the color temperature of the display to the ambient light around you. It is a good display overall as text and icons generally look sharp with no apparent jagged edges when viewing it from a normal distance. One of the biggest changes to the new MacBook Air 2020 is the Magic Keyboard marking the end of the problematic butterfly mechanism seen in the previous MacBook Air. It now comes with a brand new scissor mechanism that we saw on the 16-inch MacBook Pro last year. The new keys feel very responsive and aren't noisy when you type. The key layout is very familiar except for the power button which is smaller compared to the non-retina model. This also houses Apple's Touch ID fingerprint sensor that lets you log into the system, authorize app downloads or even autofill credentials for websites in Safari. The trackpad is larger than the non-retina model and feels just as responsive as before. Despite the increase in size, I didn't face any accidental presses or cursor movements while typing. Now, the trackpad also supports force touch, which means you get haptic feedback when you press down on any part of it. There's also a force click gesture that you can perform by continuing to apply pressure after the force touch gesture. I found it to be quite handy for previewing images and documents. Coming to I.O., you only have two Thunderbolt 3 Type-C ports and a headphone jack. But this means connecting most common accessories to the laptop is next to impossible without an adapter. It now features Intel's 10th generation CPUs which promises better processing capabilities than the previous Retina MacBook Air. Now, I'm testing the base model which has an Intel Core i3 CPU, 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of SSD storage. Now if you're coming from an older MacBook Air like I am, then switching to a Core i3 CPU in the new 2020 version might seem like a downgrade but it actually isn't. Intel's 10th Gen Core i3 CPU in this model of the MacBook Air is just as good if not better in some cases than the 5th generation Core i5 CPU in a non-retina MacBook Air. The performance was pretty solid throughout. Mac OS booted up quickly, multitasking was relatively effortless and the large trackpad made gestures even easier to use. Editing images in Photoshop was also handled very well. However, it is definitely not meant for gaming. The Core i3 variant especially that I tested had trouble churning out consistent frame rates even in games such as Asphalt 9 Legends, let alone running heavier titles from Steam. Let's talk about software now. The new MacBook Air ships with macOS 10 Catalina and will get a free upgrade to macOS 11 Big Sur when it releases in a couple of months. Talking about the battery performance, Apple claims 11 hours of web browsing or up to 12 hours of video playback on a single charge. Now, while I wasn't able to achieve these numbers during my review, I did get a fairly satisfactory runtime of about 8-9 to nine hours with regular workloads. Finally, pricing. The base variant of the new 2020 MacBook Air is around 7,000 rupees lower than the previous Retina MacBook Air, which is a great thing. There's another pre-built model with a quad-core Intel Core i5 CPU, 8 GB of RAM and a 512 GB SSD that you can buy at 1,22,990 rupees. The cool thing is that you can now customize Mac configurations in India through Apple authorized resellers. Now this gives you the added flexibility to configure up to a quad-core Core i7 CPU, up to 16 GB of RAM and up to 2 terabytes of SSD storage. If you're an existing user of a non-retina MacBook Air from 2017 or earlier and were holding off for an upgrade, I feel the 2020 refresh is definitely worth going for. The more compact body, better display, more efficient processor and higher SSD capacity are all big upgrades. 
Also, the new keyboard finally fixes the many complaints users have had with Apple's previous keyboard. The pricing might not be as aggressive as what the non-Retina models were selling for a couple of years ago in India, but it's still a lower price compared to the 2018 MacBook Air, which is a step in the right direction. However, the combination of macOS and the tight integration of iCloud with all Apple devices is what makes the Mac experience quite unique, even though the hardware might not always be at par with its Windows rivals. Overall, I think many will still find the MacBook Air 2020 as a great productivity laptop. So that's it for my review. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And as always, for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.